good coaches and there are a lot of good programs and there are places that have great facilities but there's only one Pete Cone. Water, water, water. There are no selfish motives. His involvement with our team and involvement with the sport is at the purest level. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud to be a member of this team. So proud to be a member of this team. Really proud. Pete is more than one in a billion. Bring it in here tight, let's go, nice and tight. He brings out the best in everybody that he touches. There's not as many different heroes today as there was, but when there was, there were many of them you could see. In the Troy Pacific, the Union Pacific, the BN Love, the Pennsylvania, the New York Central, the Norfolk and Western, the Southern, the Atlantic Coast Line, the Seaboard Airline, the Florida East Coast, the Southern Pacific, the Santa Fe. So and you can see all these on one plate man. They impressed me. The size of them, I don't know why. But maybe my mother was right. When you watch the freight train go by and show all the cars, you felt like you were going from place. We've been someplace. I don't know why, so you have to continue to count cars. You count the cars, and then you mark down the figure on the book. It was a hobby I picked up as a kid. It's a foolish thing, I guess, but that's me. Come out flying, come out fast, and get ahead early if you can. Come out fast and keep it going. But if we start out very well, it's going to be a great help. Don't be nervous or tight. Have a great time out there, and bring home the bacon, guys. Hey, Keith, what time is it? Time to beat Springfield. Hey. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Okay, just take a couple seconds to get wrapped up, fellas. Uh, just a couple uh, general points. I am a field manager for Middlebury College in Vermont. I've worked in a number of different sports. Uh, lacrosse has been my major sport. I have to get everything out to the field. The balls, the water, the cows, are all my responsibility. Thank you. Water anybody? Can I have a water, please? You may indeed. Thank you, sir. If you don't have that team properly prepared, even in my particular work, and if you don't help the team properly on the sidelines, you could cost the team a game or make it very difficult for them to win. Great job, Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Right here for one. All right, guys, here we go. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I wanted to check with you about tonight. Whatever is agreeable to you, uh, your feelings come first. 
Oh, Pete. I guess we're ready. Uh, well, you're all razzle-dazzle and you're red. You comfortable? I spent a lot of time with my friend Batty. Comfortable? This is pretty. I like that. But not as much as a married couple. We don't live together. We never have and neither should we. You all came already? Yeah. And she has never indicated that that's what she really wanted to do. When I was first married, he happened to be a friend of my husband's. And I happened to invite Peter over for dinner. And the end result was Peter never left. He was truly the man that came to dinner. There was just something about Peter that I felt he needed some nurturing, and he became part of the family. Yes. How big is a Vagasa op though? Oh, it's big. When I was no longer living at home, had all these homemade meals with them. That's why my health is probably what it is now. I had companionship all these many, many years. It's been something very special. Do you, do you know sheet music? You know sheet well, music? Well, I, I don't play by the notes. Oh, that's, that's right. That's hard for me right. to do that's that. Right. So my little taught me by Dvorak. When the bumblebee went to the court to call. Release him. Talk to him, Andrew. Back, 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 back. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Pete, Pete, I don't mean to interrupt, but the boys were asking if you can help them stretch. <laughs> oh, they are. Yes. Pete Cohn plays an integral part in your four years. Good to see everybody. Good to see you. He's important on a team to keep things loose, to bring some personality to a team. Pete brings out the character in the team. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! In Spanish, they want. Espanol, como esta usted? French Peter. We nerf Jesus. Chinese Pete. A Chang, a Jang, a Chang, a Shanghai. Alien. Alien. Ah, 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 gee. Whether it's getting kitted or being the kidder, he does have a great sense of humor. Yay. Well done. Thank you very much. I appreciate it so much. Somebody new to the program will come along and they'll ask with some tact, does Pete have a, a handicap? What are Pete's special needs? And you sort of take a step back and think about it and you've forgotten all about it. It's not been something that's important to my relationship with him or his relationship with the team. Thank you very much. <laughs> Give us your heart, man. Give us your heart. He would like one of those, too, this one. Yeah, that's good. What do you think oh. this is? What? What happened on these pictures? That's what I'm going to be able to Is that your thumb? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a particularly colorful thumb. No, oh, that's, that's OK. Some people think that has to, for a photograph to be a good photograph, it has to be have clarity and, and, and a lot of other things. Well, the picture is not perfect. I know that. Well, it doesn't have. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. The point is, it's the content of the mm -hmm. picture. Three guys mm -hmm. with a big smile on their face is more important than anything else. Even though, you know, because mm -hmm. of that. True. Well, this one's 75% right. thumb, but still, for her, that's a good picture, right? Yeah. He's my dearest friend, and uh, maybe my longest running friend. I was 16, and uh, Peter's a senior. My high school team was playing Pete's Park School. Pete Park had a great team that year. We had a better team than we had had for a while. And I made a, I made a remark, 
that we, we were better than fish, <laughs> which I should not have made. And uh, he was the scorekeeper, and there was a little mix-up in the score, and we had lost by one point, actually. Our scorebook said that we were ahead by one. That Paul's scorebook said it was a tie. So that car was a big heck of a room with the pistols and all. That was Park's only victory and first victory over St. Paul's, you know that. I still think today, to today, that I did not make the mistake. You didn't cheat on purpose. <laughs> so we bonded uh, there in the secondary school in the late 50s. We were very friendly, but at that time, he was way ahead of me in what he had achieved in life. I couldn't really fully stand on the same ground with him. I started a club lacrosse team, and we needed an equipment man. I asked Pete if he wanted to be a part of the team, and he said yes. I did my managing, and he did, and he did the playing. When he got me involved, that led to my whole future. He's been involved with the USA team. He's been manager for North-South games. He's been manager for championship teams. He's done the spectrum with the cross. And Middlebury enters his life around 1981-82. Jerry Schmidt had told me about Pete, so I had this picture, this vague picture in my mind of who Pete Cohn was. And when we met, we hit it off as friends. And he had mentioned that he wanted to come up to Middlebury. He understood me so well, I was still coming up, even though I was 46, almost 47 years old. So I needed people that would understand me and put up with me put it right, and he did. So I wanted to work for him, and he got me a job. Jerry felt that this was a, a role that, that Pete could play. I also sensed there were some people who superficially knew Pete, who took advantage of his handicap, and sort of laughed at him instead of laughing with him. And I just sensed that it would be neat to have him come up to Middlebury. I mean, once he was there and Pete had the towels and was rubbing guys down and cleaning their cleats, they said, this guy loves lacrosse, and he's part of it. You guys would make me look good. Yeah, I know. I'd have a good time because. Oh! oh! He's got a bullseye. Yeah. You got me. What? He's you... got a bullseye. Look at that green. That, that, that's not yours? No, that's you. Oh. No. Yeah. You don't know what to expect, I guess, when you see Pete for the first time. You get out of high school and you're going to get ready to play college across and you're fired up and you're oh, this is going to be great for four years, you know, hang out with a bunch of meatheads kind of thing. And then you get, you get involved with someone like Peter, which you can't anticipate and you realize it's nothing like you thought. It's infinitely better. He's just such an important part of our team. When I came to Middlebury, that made a big difference in my life. I think that'll be a good shot, Pete. Right, now, me and Pete, me and Pete. We have built with a great deal I had with the athletic students. It was a beautiful thing. I was so lucky that that could happen. Hey, Peter. I, I felt I could do something special for him. It was in me, I felt, and I wanted to give it. I mean, it just came to me naturally. Someone's in the kitchen with... No. Someone's in the kitchen with... Someone's in the kitchen with... Peter, can you hear me? 
I, I hear you, but I want to get a room. Do you carry any aspirin or? I bet if I have any aspirin and now I can do what I have. Do you, you usually in your box or wherever? My personal medical situation has changed a little bit, so I uh, don't have the full energy to extend as I did once before. Mm -hmm. Take care. I will, and you too, Betty. All righty. I was diagnosed with colon cancer a good year ago, so I am out there to find out what can be done. I think medical situations is something Peter doesn't want to discuss. I said, you know, Peter, we have to prepare for the next stage. I know you don't like to go to doctors. I don't either. But you need a little assistance in checking your eyes, checking your hearing, checking your general physical state of being, because I just couldn't handle it at this time. Load them up. So we'll go to the audiologist tomorrow morning. Then we'll go to the dentist. And then we'll go to the eye doctor. We'll have lunch tomorrow in, in Salisbury. And then we'll get your eyesight checked. All tomorrow? Yeah. Because we're going to have to go back to a couple places. Ear, nose, and throat uh, doctor that we might see, too. That makes sense? I didn't know, but I wanted to do it all in one day. This is the one Betty specifically asked me to make an appointment with. He's the best on the Eastern Shore. All of the things done behind my back without my being able to say what I want to do. I like Betty to be more understanding of me to realize I will never hear like she hears. Well, she I don't know that. whether I can ever hear as much as she thinks I can hear with the hearing age. You know, Betty just says that, you know, she's mm -hmm. got so many things on her mind and it's hard for her to take that responsibility. So that I, I picked up the, the uh, ball on the, mm -hmm. you know, on the uh, couple things. So I'm, I'm sure you understand once you, you think right. about it. Okay? Hi, doctor. Hi. All right. He's concerned and, and uh, he doesn't want the attention focused on him. Look right straight ahead for me. How's that look? Much better. Open up a bit. Do you smoke? No. Do you ever smoke? No. Ready? All right. Just relax, Pete. Relax. It's okay. I uh, know. This is not very much fun. Mm. Okay. Good, good. It's just making them fit. Make sure they fit. I'm trying to get this up on your gum so that it'll quit hurting. Okay. What I want to do is I'm going to have her fix this because where it wasn't the way I wanted it, I'm going to have her fix it back the way I want it. Probably, probably afternoon would probably be better. Right. Okay? Come on up front. What did he say? Tomorrow afternoon, come back. He's going to check the fight. He's we'll doing great. Right. Have okay. a good day. Right. You ready? It says, Peter Cone. Need new hearing aid. I don't think so. That's exactly what it says. <laughs> what are you doing? You don't trust me? Will be the reader or not? I read it to they you. They can't say that because they wouldn't know who I am. It's a magic. I don't know how they knew that. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is perfect. A quiet evening with friends is the best party for a long day. You're making that up. No, I'm not. Is that what he really says? No. That's great. Yeah, it could be. All right. Okay, I can't get this thing. <laughs>
Number one, a senior from Denver, Colorado, Christopher Davis. Number four, a senior from Sudbury, Massachusetts, Mike Prisora. How did you think the Bates girls team were? The Bates girls team? Yeah. They, they feel a lot of heart. Yeah, but they weren't very good. Well, I don't say bad things about anybody. I mean, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Maybe our team was just too good. What? Our team was just too good. Yeah, don't be big-headed about it. <laughs> we have some pretty good teams. But they haven't lost in 40-something games. Well, that's true. They haven't. Yeah. 45. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that they're really good. Yeah, but they are. Yeah. But I do feel for the other, I have feeling for the other team. I think lacrosse is part of life. The responsibilities there are no different than out in the world. You have the same responsibilities to give more than you think you can give. The requirement is the same. We all are called to do this sometimes in our life. You have to be ready for that. Now take this hand, not that hand. Take this hand. So you put too much, Peter. That's why I gave you a real Dude. little bit. Rub this all into your skin. You gotta smooth it out like this. Smooth it out. Smooth it out. Right now, I'm taking a rest from the chemotherapy. So I made the move to Florida. And since I'm in uh, a state of um, flux right now, Peter has chosen to be a companion to me. The type of thing that we don't know in the long run what will happen, and I ought to be maybe more available if she needs me. Peter, you're starting to bend down. Stand up straight. Get that chin out and onward. Straight. You don't want to be like this. You want to be straight. Sit down, Pete. Sit down. I truthfully hate to get you all postponing your time in Middlebury and all that, you know? Uh, you, to me, I can't keep saying it, your health and well-being come first, and if it, you feel that it's best for me to stay firm and I be here, then that's where I will be. And that's the way it should be, it should be the way I look at it. Hearing aids really yet? I can't hear it at all. You can't you can't hear it? You got your bathing suit, Peter? Bathing suit. It's uh, making the noise, Pete. Making more noise than usual. It takes a lot of energy out of you because you're constantly aware. It's like having a little child sometimes. It kind of drains you. Believe me, I've had years and years of experience with it. 37 years ago, I met Peter walking with my husband who knew Peter. Dan was a very strapping, good-looking fella, but was totally unaware of his looks and just wanted to make people feel comfortable. And I think when he befriended Peter, Peter felt very close to Dan. I knew that Peter didn't really have a close family, so my husband and I both would extend an invitation for holidays. 
And that went on for a number of years. Peter had promised my husband when he passed away that he would always be here to care for me and to make sure that I was well taken care of and uh, not to worry about anything. And Peter has really stuck to that promise. Peter's there and always, always will be. How are you feeling? Okay, Peter. Good. Do I ask you that too much? Peter, I don't know why you don't go. I just think it's my place here. Wow, Peter, I, you know. It's not I have to. No, but. no, I understand that, Peter. I understand it. So you'd be content if I left? Sure, Peter, yeah. you do what, yeah. really. Don't, don't feel you no. have to be here. Maybe I'll go, but, but you can understand my mixed feelings. <laughs> oh, Peter, that's sweet. That's sweet. You've been very, very kind, Peter, and I appreciate it. No, I'm the way you I know should that. be. Oh, you know I appreciate yeah, I mean, it. I know you do. But I want you to have some fun. I feel like you know? that. I was always contrary. As a kid, my mother and father couldn't handle me. I needed special help. My mother had to make all the trips to the doctors, take us where we had to go. And my father's family thought we might not make it. Why my mother, maybe she should not make that effort. But she said, no, I wouldn't go strong on time for my son to be able to be useful and valuable people. She sacrificed her health and well-being to do that. That was getting worse at home, so I finally had to leave home. That made the difference in my life. What my mother couldn't do, she found help for me somewhere else. And because of that, my goals were reached. I don't know. I'd like it. God and Jesus could tell her that I'm doing it. And her son is doing okay. My nice friend Peter, you. always a pleasure. How you doing? Welcome thank you. home. Well, thank you. Welcome to be home. Miss everybody so much. Good to see you, folks. You're a little late for work, I would say. Yes, I am. Pete just sort of seamlessly fits right in and all of a sudden he's there. He's loading the bus and you show up and wait, there's Pete. And uh, you know, not a big entry, uh, just sort of there where he belongs all of a sudden. Everybody's having fun. Yeah, as usual. Welcome back. Good to be back. Glad you're here. You're a little shy. Yeah. Seriously. What do you got, Pete? I won't say much because I've been away, but you all know how I feel about dedication and rising up above ourselves. We can accomplish far more than we ever realized if we do that. And uh, good luck to you all today. Have a wonderful game. <laughs> hey, Pete, what time is it? Time to beat Williams. But you got anything for us? Uh, don't take this team for granted. The minute you take somebody for granted, that's when you can have a very difficult day. Play with full dedication, rise up, and have the cream come out on the top. Play hard and well. Have a great day today, and bring home the bacon. Yeah. Hey, Pete, what time is it? 
Tava de deidade, mano. Guys, we're all hard. It was an honor to play you all. Hey, what time is it? Time to be tough. I'm glad I played it. a wonderful game. Wonderful to play you all. You played very, very well. Hey, Street, what time is it? Uh, time to be Cortland today. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. I know that it's my place to be here now, uh, rather than with Betty, but I still miss her very, very much. Hello? How are you? Fine, just to catch you up, one thing to catch you up a little bit. Uh, we won yesterday. You know, everything's going well. I can't complain. Uh, you you sound good. That's great. I'm so that's wonderful. I'm so wonderfully happy about that. Uh, take care. Bye bye. Uh, take care. Did you see the T-shirt yet? Here, you, there's the front. Mm -hmm. All right. I might, let's see if you can figure out what this means, okay? Or figure out who's on there. I can't quite figure that out. I mean, my face... What's your right. first name? Uh, Peter. Okay, short, how about short for Peter? Oh, Pete. Right. How about, Pete? yeah. Three Pete champion? Three Pete. Three, three Pete. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say? Beautiful. I can't be big about it, but it's beautiful. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it was nice a, that they cared enough to do that. It was a good year. It, to, it was a good year to do that shirt. So no, I appreciate it very much. Yeah. I guess you won a certain amount of honor or prestige, certain amount of standing. A player gets that, but a manager usually doesn't. He got the fellowship award uh, in '03. Great, great purse. Great, great choice. Best speeder attackman I've ever seen. Greatest coach ever, probably. I know his daughter and their family very well. There's a number of people that I know. If you remember how many years I've been in there and how many people I've worked with, been fortunate enough to, lucky enough to work with in that time. One of the greatest players ever. The ultimate reward, I think, if you talk to any athlete, is to, to uh, be elected into their Hall of Fame, and we're working on it. We've submitted applications and information about Peter. It's a little different to fill out a form about Peter and then wonder how many goals you scored and whether you made the All-American teams or won championships. And none of that, of course, particularly relates to, to, to Peter and what he does. There's absolutely no doubt that he should be in it. It's just a matter of uh, a groundswell to break tradition. So many friends, so many wonderful, beautiful, to be holy experiences. That's too small. It won't hold yeah. the pictures here. That's too right. small too. Yeah. I'll I do just have to wait then. Um, see, the other thing I have to hold them are these because most people don't get those size pictures. These keep falling. You want a chair to sit down before I tell you how much these cost? Well, I take care of my money. Yes. I mean, now I'm a nice word. Maybe I'll put all you do Well, we'll that. consider this a splurge. Right. 171.10. When I lost my mother in my late 30s, uh -huh. I had not had a feeling with money, but I was left enough so I could take care of myself. Right. And I got a couple of charge cards and got in trouble. But I had to learn the hard way. Most people do learn the hard way. Right. You have a good day, Peter. No, I learned the hard way to take care of my money. How are you? Man, how are you? Uh, 38 years. 38 years.
Uh, And I've said the same. You got older. Uh Uh-oh. I've been Peter's trustee since 1966. He fortunately uh, doesn't have to worry a lot about funding, and uh, I do the worrying for him. What I need to know is this. I wanted you to sit down with me and show me the ropes of the club so I know exactly what we have. I'm not saying that to be me. I understand. I don't force anything on you. You can't run my life for me. You've got to realize that. You have to realize I'm a fully independent person. I got in trouble with my mother because she didn't, she couldn't, didn't feel she could let me be myself. But I'm myself now and don't want to be governed by somebody else. Well, by I, I, I only do things when you consent to them. That's it? why I wanted you to sit down with me. He wants to be involved in all of decision making. He likes the idea of flexibility and doing things himself. Oh, see, you didn't know that till I had to fight my mother in my adult life because she didn't have faith in me to handle things myself, and I thought I had some, and, and it was a very difficult time. And that's why I want a little more independence from the class because. I have that faith in being able, even though it isn't for us That's to be able to handle it. I'm I have great faith in you. Right, you but know I that. need your help to do that. Right. All right. Take See care. Well, that's where we had our store. It founded in 1897, on well, November 15th. But the building is no longer there, unfortunately. I wish it was. My father's father's brother ate the department store. Uh, I bought a world that provided for it. Our house, our food, the roof over our head. It was a little bit of pleasure. And I love it to sit at the dining room. She would sit in her coffee with a big roast beef, and then I'd have to supper. And I'd sit on my mother's lap for a loving kiss. The event was just as hard for me to work. The business that my father was involved in provided a form for me to be able to have the career that I had because I could be independent. I inherited enough to take care of myself. Without being able to be independent, it wouldn't have happened. Hi, Pete. Hi, Pete. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome that one. Now I found three. Well, that was worth it. Ooh. I got something over here to look at. <laughs> It needs, it needs a good cleaning, I think. There's something on it. Ew. From taking balls in the bush. I thought you would have calmed down in foolish. your old age. I was foolish. <laughs> Peter. Up, up there, Peter. I'm not a kid now that can go hours and hours and hours on hand. Pete! You're working too hard. Ah, uh, foolishness, I think. Oh. I'm no longer 30 or 40 or 50. My official retirement will be when the year is over, when the games are over. I somewhat be reluctant about that, but it has to come sometime. If it comes off, just come see okay. me. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Peter. Good night. A lot of people have said, well, what in the heck is Peter going to do now that he retires? I mean, the only thing that worries me a little bit is he doesn't have many hobbies except people. I want to see the 
play and help me with my ride. Oh. Peter, do you want to drive home today? No, I don't. You want to drive? No, I don't drive myself. <laughs> That's a problem. In 1988, we designated a rookie on the team to make sure that after the practice or the game, that Pete was with somebody who it was helpful. It was Pete's companion. And ever since that time, there has been a Keeper of the Cone. It's an honor. The Keeper of the Cone made sure that everybody understood that uh, a respect for Pete was absolutely critical. Keepers, keepers. Cone gets his food first before you guys. Yeah. JP, Cone gets his food before you guys do. Peter, step up, my friend. There's the lineage of Keepers of the Cone who make sure that everything gets done properly and they know what Pete needs and you learn where you fit into that. It's a reward in itself just, you know, having that responsibility. You see a different side of a lot of your teammates that you might never have gotten a chance to see. To go from then a testosterone-filled locker room to, a, uh, to, to seeing people deal with Pete, you know, he's really a special vehicle for people. So Peter, 10, 20 tomorrow? And I'll go right from in to, to the, the girls' game, right. and then, then the men's game, and then our game, and then the movie, right. and then right. the dinner. Yeah, whatever it's gonna be. And then the party. I'll go to your locker room first and read the chewing gum. Yep. And then I'll go to women's field. All right. And so I will see you at the games tomorrow. Right. All right? See you tomorrow. Bye. Drive carefully. Remember 78 trip, the train going through Europe. Every stop, he ran out, and I had to take his picture. Yes, sir. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome. You ready for a big breakfast? Right. Okay. Peter, this camera's gonna last for the uh, whole breakfast, or are we gonna have to go to the store halfway through? Not today. That'll last till noon. I hope. Come on in. Yeah, we're all set. Mm. Yeah. It was about 1996 when we established the Peter Cohn Award. It's given to someone in the lacrosse community who has gone above and beyond the call of duty in their effort to serve. I know the recipients are honored to receive this award that's been given in the name of Peter Cohn. This is the seventh year we have given this special award. We know Coach Schmidt, he's known for many different things, um, from being the only lacrosse player ever to be on the front cover of Sports Illustrated in 1962, two or three time All-American attackman at Hopkins, national championship coach at Hobart. And Coach Schmidt's one of a number of folks who reached out and saw something in Pete Cohn and chose to touch Pete. And in turn, Pete has turned and touched and blessed so many of us in this room and so many people in the lacrosse community. So it's my honor, on behalf of Peter Cohn, to present to Jerry Schmidt this special award. I couldn't be happier. Peter is a dear friend. It's not something that's just coming to uh, fruition right now. It is a 45-year uh, love affair with Pete. And Peter's touched so many people in so many different ways, and there's hundreds of Peter stories. And I'm more than honored to, uh, to get uh, the Peter Award. The, um, the thing I would like to say is that Peter is a deserving member of the Lacrosse Hall of Fame. And if there's anybody that agrees with that, if you have any influence over the powers to be, uh, put a good word in for Pete. He, he sure deserves it. And it is a lifelong uh, thought that he, that he has. It's just a great honor to be here with Pete and so many of my friends. Thank you.
I don't have any doubt that he'll get in. My only real hope is it's in his lifetime. You know, hopefully he'll be around when the day comes. I'd love to hear his uh, acceptance speech. Let's go. I hope everybody remembers things like that during the year as they may be of help to you today. But one thing I urge upon all of you, don't think about the crowd, don't think about the size of the stadium. Don't make it different from the field anywhere else. Just play, have a good time, and let your character and dedication stand out brilliantly. My last game, my regular duty. What's next for you, Peter, after managing? I have a very dear friend that may not be entirely well, and I want to be able to spend time with that, uh, with Betty Billy, uh, very much so. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all of you. In the name of, uh, in the name of every athlete that I work with, uh, I thank everybody so much. Hey. Hey. What time is it? It's time to be the and win the championship. Hey! Fellas, it's halftime of the game. We're not playing for pride in the second <coughs> half or anything like that. We're playing to win the freaking yeah, game are. right now, right? Yeah. We're playing to win the game. On three team, we got one more chance to say it. Let's do it. Okay, on, on three team. Ready? One, two, three! Team! Let's go, 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 let's go,
And I'm so proud to be a part of his team. Me too. I'm going to miss too. it terribly. Team that can do that. It's truly an honor. You're with their hearts. There are a lot of things that we talk about in our team about what's important. We're on a very competitive sports team, we do well, and it's easy to fall into wins and losses, championships. But when all is sudden done, Peter is there to walk across the stage like somebody in a Shakespearean play to change the, the tone and bring you back to really what's important. You know what we want, Pete. What? Dino Pete. You know what we want. Ready? You know what we want. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I've been working on the railroad, over the river all day. Someone's in the kitchen with my stuff. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Someone's in the kitchen with my stuff. Drumming on the old banjo. What's he strumming? Oh, by the way, see The old band. I think you find out as you go through life, if our wonderful experiences don't end, there's no meaning to them. And they just become a nothing if they just went on and on and on. To realize the full meaning of that, they have to end. Going that direction. Okay. Nuts over. Nice and That's nice. Dark. I like dark chocolate. You take the card. I'm gonna get the car. I try to do all my little things for. Her. I try to be here so she has somebody in the house so that she's comfortable and has company, which she needs. She needs a glass of water or. You know, something to eat or a medicine or something, I'm there. Now, do anything else for you? Okay. Where everybody needs me, I will be here. There we go. I'm just trying to be somewhat silent because uh, of Betty. So that this is a good morning for Betty, good day for Betty. I want to make sure I'm not a spoiler for Betty. I make sure I don't get out of mind. It's her day. Peter, nothing is forever. None of us know what tomorrow brings because tomorrow isn't guaranteed for any of us. I love Betty. I want to do everything I can for her. I want her friendship. And it doesn't matter if she's going for a difficult time. I, will start, I want to be with her. Stay with her. If you love somebody and you 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 don't walk away from, away when they need you. Good 
Thank you, O oh Lord God and Jesus, for your divine love for Betty. She is so much better off because of it. I hope you all will restore Betty, even if it should, ha it should have to be a, a divine miracle of love. If I, as your humble earthly servant, can ask you for that, if I can, and hopefully I can, uh, well, if I can, let's put it that way. And if that will be done, amen. We're saying goodbye to 2003. Right, goodbye to 2003. Welcome 2000. Welcome, welcome 2004. And here we go. May all acquaintance be forgotten. Never. Everybody can sing with me. We might may all acquaintance be forgot as in days of old man son for old man my dear for old my son my dear we will drink a cup of kind kind kindness <laughs> yet for old man and try. Very good, Peter. Very good. You Very did good, it. Peter. I hope you up. liked it all, Betty. Oh, yes, I loved it. Mm. Are you kidding? Where would I have this opportunity? Oh, well. oh you're Very sweet, nice. Peter. Yeah. Yes, you nice. are. Yes, you are. Something else. <laughs> yes. Say good night to Peter. Okay, little guy. We gotta get you ready for your little baby. You call them, but man, that's right. <laughs> right. That's the truth. Hey, hey, no biting. No biting. No biting. Okay. Good night, Pete. Good night, Betty. Take care. Okay. I feel funny being here alone or straight. I can't go around the side and see Betty. And that, that makes a big difference. But I, but I, I, but I know I have to go on living and I'm doing that. Well, it's very nice that we're together. Well, I think it is. We're both very fortunate. I do have wonderful friends that look out for me. Yeah. Working in that project might have helped a little, who knows. I had everything I could ever want to have. I guess maybe I wouldn't want to have a son or, you know, or something like that. Right. Uh, you have many sons, Peter. Right. All the kids that you work with, you got a lot of sons. One, two, three! Yeah. 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 Good job, Thanks, Thanks buddy.
Oh, Peter, I love you. <laughs> go, guys. Let's go, Sarge. Let's go get them, guys. Anybody else want water? Thanks, Peter. You're welcome. Thank you, Pete. You're welcome. Much appreciated. Glad you do it. Much appreciated. Yeah. I guess one has to keep his emotions together and realize what the real meaning of life is. There are so many people I have to thank because I was very, very difficult for many years, but because people put up with me, I finally did find myself at a very late age, but I did find myself and uh, uh, and I always say, better late than never. If it had to come very late for me, for some people, it doesn't happen. I thank all of you for allowing me to be myself, Peter Cohen, which was the most important thing I needed, was to be loved and cared for as myself and accepted that way. Thank you all so much.